Hello and welcome to Get Yourself Optimized. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer, and today it is my incredible pleasure and honor to have Mark Victor Hansen and Crystal Hansen with us today. Mark Victor Hansen, he's widely known as an American inspirational and motivational speaker, trainer, author, serial entrepreneur, and member of multiple board of directors. He's best known, though, as the founder and co-creator of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. That book series has sold more than 500 million copies. Crystal Hansen is an international speaker, researcher, corporate consultant, author, and entrepreneur. Her expertise is in the field of human potential. Through her years spent as a transformational life coach, wellness, and nutrition expert, she has seen people experience profound and lasting transformation in relationships, career, health, and wellness by tapping into their inner resources. Having personally guided people from seemingly impossible states of depression, anxiety, and hopelessness to triumph, freedom, and happiness is what drives Crystal's conviction that all people have unlimited potential for greatness if they only understand how to access those resources. Together, Mark and Crystal have the book, Ask, which is hot off the, the bookshelves and hot off the presses and available at a bookstore, virtual or uh, otherwise near you. So Mark and Crystal, it's so great to have you on the show. We're honored to be with you. Thank you. So great to, to join you today. So I would love to, first of all, hear the story of how you guys met, you know, just like this idea of soulmates, I believe is very real. And I'd love to hear what uh, your guys' take is on that whole soulmate thing uh, and, and weave that into your story of, of the magic of meeting and, and becoming life partners. Yeah, we definitely believe in soulmates too, Stefan, because each of us had been through, uh, I was in a 20 year marriage, Mark, 27 year marriage. I had been recently divorced. He was divorced three years. And my mother um, got an email and said, you know, you need to go to this Author 101 event. And I was in the middle of writing my first book called Pure Thoughts for Pure Results. And she said, you know, there'll be publishers and publicists there. And Mark Victor Hansen will be there. And I was like, oh, whoa, mom. I was like, when is it? Because I was living in Scottsdale, and Arizona at the time. And uh, she said, it's basically the day after tomorrow. And I go, oh, I'm sure they're sold out. I can't go. <laughs> and besides that, who, who's going to watch my, the kids, you know? And she goes, I'll watch the kids. You just call. So I called um, the promoter. I called the number and the promoter himself called me back within five minutes, which was odd because usually you'd expect to hear from, you know, an admin assistant or something like that. And Rick Frischman called me back himself and he said, Crystal, we'd love to have you. We're not sold out. Come on over. So I'm like, okay, I guess this thing has a life of its own. I'm going to begun going. So I, a day and a half later, I met this event, Mark's the keynote speaker. And I was at the VIP room afterwards because I really wanted to connect with everyone. And I was so serious about my work. I'm like, I'm not drinking. I'm not, I'm not even going to have any wine. I'm just going to be all business here. And so he's in the corner surrounded by this entourage of people like Mark, Mark, you know, and I'm over here talking about to a speaking coach. Suddenly this woman who's this woman from South America is talking with her hands next to me. And the, there was a glass of wine on the table next to us. And she whacked the whole thing on my white pants. I mean, the, irony, <laughs> the, girl, the girl who's not drinking, right. Gets a whole glass of red wine spilled on her white pants. It was like the entire glass jumped on one leg of my white pants. And I was just like, and Mark must have been looking my way, Stefan, because all of a sudden he like breaks out of his crowd. He comes over to me. And he's like, I'm so sorry. He grabbed my hand. He's like, I'm so sorry you got doused with wine. I think I know where the club soda is. <laughs> Follow me. So he actually did know where the kitchen was because he had had so many events at this particular hotel in LA. And uh, so then he just, you know, got the club soda, got it cleaned up. We got to talking. He started asking me about me. And I told him about, you know, my I was really excited about my life coaching practice. I was having, my clients were having amazing breakthroughs and that's why I wrote about it. And uh, he's like, I'd love to hear more, but I'm starving. It's 930. You know, have you had dinner? And I hadn't had dinner. He goes, well, I said, sure. I'd love to have dinner with you. And he said, let's leave the hotel because everyone will be, you know, hounding me all night to just get five minutes. Cause that's just the way it is. So I ran upstairs. I had to change my clothes and uh, called my mom real quick. I said, mom, um, I have to hurry. How are the kids? Um, you're not going to believe it. I said, I'm going to, to dinner with Mark Victor Hansen. And she goes, 
I knew it. And I was like, really? You knew? I didn't know. Um, so it was really funny. We we went to a restaurant. And uh, do you want to tell the rest of the story? I do. I'm going to do one okay. preface of that I don't usually do because you asked, started by soulmate. We think we're two hearts and one soul. But when you, it's like when you put two candles together, it jumps four to eight fold. It's called exponential or acceleration. Mm -hmm. And we think our two hearts became a soulmate, but better than that, twin, twin flames. Anyhow, so... Uh, we get to the top restaurant in LA and there's like 50 people in line. I go hundred dollar bill. isn't going to get us in. And it's late at night. I don't know what to do. So I just grabbed her hand courageously because we're teaching ask and we go up to the guy and he looks at my, the plucrotrudeness uh, emanating out of every pore of my wife's beingness. And he said, okay, I give up. Who is she? Now remember you always answer a question with a. Another question. question. <laughs> yeah. So I said, you don't recognize her. Totally said, silly. The totally guy's silly. head is going on steroids. And he says, no, no. Uh, who is she? And I said, "She's." A, I'm joking. We're both of Danish descent. I said, she's a queen of Denmark. She says, no, she's not. And all of a sudden he goes, oh, my God, she is. Who are you? Back to questions. I said, well, who travels with the queen? He says, oh, my, you're the king. Hold on one second. And that fast, we had the best table in the place and the maitre d' and, and the chef coming out. It was great. And we oh, you know, awesome. a uh, uh, goofy thing like that. You can't stop it. But I think God ordained us to be together. Right. It was, we were just kidding around. We're like, oh my gosh, I think he took us seriously. <laughs> it's like, okay, we'll run, we'll run with it. Now that that we're awesome. It optimized us and, and we've had an optimized relationship. <laughs> I got to tell you. <laughs> well, it seems like it was uh, like the universe was conspiring to make it all happen for you. That woman knocking the the wine on on your blouse or your pants and everything that ensued, it it was like part of if, if you're using project management terminology, it was part of the critical path. <laughs> it right. really was right. part of the critical path, and just the fact that I really was like resisting even going. You know, it's like the universe had we we already had a lot of energy going in each other's direction, and there was just no no getting out of it, which was really cool. And if I may add, I went through a painful and expensive divorce. And so, you know, superficially, most people get married because I want him tall, dark and handsome if you're a woman. And I want him, you know, a uh, hot babe if you're a man. But I, I'd written on 267 things I needed in my ideal woman, characteristics, values, virtues and all that. And, and we had to have the same values. We had to spiritually want to grow. Uh, we wanted to love each other's questions. So I kept asking myself all that stuff. And, and wrote it, never thinking I could find uh, my ideal. And not only, it, it, it eclipsed it. Now, in graduate school, I was with Bucky Fuller, and his great-great-grandfather was Ralph Waldo Emerson. And, and uh, you know, he was a transcendentalist. She transcends everything I'd ever dreamt that I could have. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. It That's, is. It definitely sounds oh, like, like true love, like, like uh, soulmates, oh. twin flames. Yeah, that's... that's uh... It's a real gift. It's a real gift. Not everybody gets that in a lifetime. But, uh... Yeah, no, you're right, <laughs> you're Stephen. Right. And we don't, you know, we don't take it for granted because, you know, we each, like I said, we're in marriages before and it's not like, we're not going to say, oh, those are just, we're terrible people, but we didn't have anything close to what we have now. And, you know, we've had the other experience to compare with and it's, um, there's really nothing like having your true soulmate in life because you just, it's sort of that foundation that, that we, our relationships are the foundation upon which we build our lives. Truly, it is the most important thing. And um, that's why in our book, we talk about, you know, asking in relationships. We talk about asking for, you know, excel wealth acceleration, asking for health and wellness and asking in for your relationships, because it's super important. And we miss so much by not understanding the questions we should be asking, even when we're already in a relationship. Usually that's why relationships start to fail is because you're not taking the time to ask the right questions of yourself, others. And then for us, God, those are, those are our three channels that we talk about asking, ask yourself, ask others and ask God. And each one's super critical and especially in relationships. Yeah. Amazing. Now this brings me to a, I think a really important point that you said, ask God. And some people think that they are asking the universe or that's, that's the way to go is to ask the universe. Now, I learned this very important distinction from Kim White, who was uh, a past guest on this podcast. Uh, he is able to communicate with angels. He's got really amazing psychic abilities. And he, he's like, 
You know, if you ask the universe, then you're asking the duality. Right. Right. Dark, light, good, bad. You know, you get you get both sides of the coin. Right. And you may not want that. But if you ask God directly, that's only pure love, pure light, pure source. So it doesn't come with any of the downside, the side effects that you would get by asking the universe. And I wanted to hear what your guys' take is on that. First of all, I think both of us are going to have a take and it'll be two different, hopefully illuminating answers. Um, first of all, I think God's a mainframe computer. You and I are many frames off the mainframe. So that's that part. As for asking God, when we were falling in love, we're sitting in a mother's market and the guy next to us is obviously a man of the cloth with a little white collar. And he leans in and says, you guys are deeply in love. Do you want to know what the secret is of long, sustainable marriages? And I go, I don't really want to talk to you. I want to talk to her, but okay. <laughs> now, you know, Tell me this story. So well, I've been head of Billy Graham relationship ministries for 70 years, not I'm, you know, 92. Yeah. So what you got to do is pray out loud. So we did that this morning. And what happens is, you go to an elevated state of awareness is, is, you know, my model is self-awareness. Who do you want to be doing? What do you want to have to self-expression, self-mastery? And then the high level is you're in a tune with the infinite. And, and the principle here is uh, I wrote the forward to a book. God doesn't care what you call him by a Jewish rabbi. He had 367 names for God, but you're right. Talking to the universe is a duality, but God is the ultimate oneness. And the, and the prayer I do, like when I'm showering every day, is a father and I are one, which is if that's good enough for Jesus, say it's good enough for me. So it works for me. And we are totally in alignment as far as we're concerned with God. And, and as a result, when you're in tune with the infinite, right, which is what the whole Bible, Old Testament and New says, and I, I did do chicken soup with this whole Bible, so I'm pretty clear on this. We did a little stories getting the big story. But when you're in tune with the infinite, Miracles literally happen. I did do a, miracle, a book called Miracles in You Too. You want to add that? Can, yeah, yeah, I, I, I do actually. You know, it's interesting. It's become really popular to, you know, uh, more popular to say, let's talk to the universe or ask the universe. And it's so funny for me because it's like, okay, if you collapse the entire universe down to its source, you have God. So why would, why not just go straight to God? Go to the source. Go to, you know, yes, God That's made the good. entire universe and everything in it, including you. But like you were saying, why why wouldn't you just go straight to God, straight to the source of everything? Because, you know, the entire universe isn't in you, but God does dwell inside of you through his spirit, the Holy Spirit. It's God in you. You know, um, we all have that essence in it, in us. And it's actually talked about in multiple religions, but Jesus talked about it a lot, right? And he told us that, you know, everything he did, we can do. But it's funny, that's the part of the Bible, like even Bible literalists don't take that one literally. They're like, they ignore that one, right? And kind of, it, it's just interesting to me because really Jesus's message was the most empower, empowering message of all time. Like the things I can you do, you can do, but even greater than these, just believe like I believe. What did he believe? He believed the kingdom of heaven is inside of you, me, each one of us. And we are created in our creator's image. And so I think if people could just get that message and really own it, they would really start to feel their lives change in the most miraculous ways. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has the divine spark in them. Yep. And that power is the power that creates worlds, literally creates planets. And that same power is inside of us. And uh, one thing I started doing that I found to be really transformational and very profound is to start to look at people as their divine spark, as their soul, as their you know, God spark, and, and not just look at the person's exterior. Just look at them as you know, a spark of the divine. And, and then something happens, which is really, it's beyond explanation almost. It's like, did you see the movie, The Matrix? Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. 20 some years ago. Yeah. Well, there's a point where Neo starts seeing the code in the people and the environment. Right. It's like, that's what happens. It's a switch where you start to glimpse the matrix. And I don't know if you've ever had that kind of a, um, uh, a vision or, or 
experience like that. But if, if you've had something like that, I'd love for you to share that with, with me and, and our listener. First of all, that's exactly what we're talking about in Ask. We're saying, hey, look, the bridge from your dreams, your destiny. We think when you are check out your code, like in the Matrix, when you're in your code, right? And we think the code came before birth, right? He's the author and finisher of our faith, God. And so what happens is when you're in tune with the infinite and you and God are one, you can do godly, God-like things, right? And that's, uh, I mean, there's no way... I'm, I'm of illiterate parents in a blue collar city mm. and, and the chance of becoming world's best selling author tries zero. Right. <laughs> I mean, it just, it, right. it, so the, and, and then the miracles that we pulled off, uh, you know, you say, well, you've talked to 80 countries to 7 million people. And we discovered the people that don't ask are the people that succeed below their privilege. And, and I really believe Christ taught us to ask. So you receive didn't, um, tell you how to do it. So we're saying how to do it because we think everybody's here to fulfill their potential to 10 X themselves or whatever you want to call it, get a hundred percent of potential in all seven dimensions of their life, which is what he was talking about. Most people don't start to even test their own metal, the spiritual stuff inside the M E T T L E stuff, which is what I think you're talking about. Do you want to add to that? Um, yeah. I mean, in terms of, yes, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, Stefan, when you start to understand and realize you know, it's, it's like back to what the namaste, you know, the divine in me recognizes the divine in you. That's it's what, what Jesus did all the time. He recognized the divinity in every single being. He didn't care what the labels said or, you know, and when you start to look at people that, but that way you do see magic and it's, it's almost unbelievable. The experiences that start to happen to you, the profound magic and love, and it can happen between you and, you know, your waiter at the restaurant, like just these amazing things where two beings, two spiritual beings in this human experience start to open up to one another. And it's interesting because in the in Ask, I don't know if you had a chance to read the fable of Michaela. Did you read it? Mm -mm, I didn't. Oh, 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 you're going to, I know you're going to love this just based on our <laughs> conversation. You have to promise me you will read this starting tonight. Okay. Okay. It's um, Yeah, so I've been very blessed, you talked about experiences, to have these kind of profound dreams my entire life, very spiritual dreams. And so when we decided to write the fable, we were going to do an animal, and I said, let's write it about a girl. I just suddenly thought, let's just try writing it about a girl. And I I integrated some of the dreams that I have had, some of the dreams, and I, I changed them to Michaela's life and situation circumstances. But the magical qualities, all those real qualities that I'm describing in the dreams are, are things that I've experienced. And so when you start to understand your own divinity and others, you start to have these profound experiences that you'll realize you're not completely bound just to this, this plane that you're seeing, this earthly plane. There's actually, you're also a light body. And so uh, often in your dreams and in visions and other things, your light body transcends what's going on in your human body. And you can have these amazing experiences and awarenesses. But so Michaela had lost, let me just give you a little backdrop on the fable of Michaela in Ask. She lost everything. She lost her mother and her father, one after the other. She, it's the time of kings and queens. She was basically um, sold as an indentured servant to a stone quarry. So her job every day is about lifting heavy rocks from one place to another. And that's really how a lot of people feel about life, right? That it's just lifting heavy rocks every day from one place to another. People lost a lot of hope, a lot of uncertainty, especially what we've gone through the past couple of years. And so Michaela is sleeping. She lost her home. They took her, the bill collectors took her home away from her after the deaths of her parents. So she's sleeping in a grove of trees and she falls asleep one night exhausted. And this being comes to her. And he takes her on this incredible journey and he shows her this bridge and he says, he gives her some messages, but one of the main parts of what, of the message was the key is to start asking and never stop asking. So she wakes up and she understands something really profound has happened to her and she can't stop thinking about it. And she records it in her journal. And then she goes to work that day and suddenly she starts to wonder. She starts to ask herself about the people around her. You know, she starts to, you know, open up to some of their questions and starts to ask them, 
questions. And little by little, as she starts asking herself, others, and God, spirit, she her life starts to shift in these miraculous ways. And she not only discovers her own divinity, but the divinity in everyone around her and how all of us play a part in this beautiful web. I mean, we are we are playing in this web together. And if we don't realize that, we miss so much. When we do realize it, it starts to connect in such beautiful ways. So by the time the story is over, Michaela has had a 180 degree change, turnaround in her life. And it's it's really exciting and magnificent. I think you'll really enjoy it. Can I add one thing, sure? Yeah. Looks like it's going to become a movie and, and our agent who's yeah. got to go on name because he's famous and doesn't want anyone calling him because they say, well, anybody that's a friend of our quick dancers will call me. Anyhow, <laughs> it looks like he says it'll be bigger than uh, little Harry Potter. But I want to go back to what you said about the, seeing the divinity in people because there's a critical story here. We've just been commissioned and finished uh, writing a book on the biggest black ministry at 20 million people here and 20 million in Africa, Reverend Ike. He was my close friend. Um, most people would say he's from Harlem, but that's he was an evangelist more than he had a giant church that I went to in Harlem when I lived in New York. But the fact is he and I were like this. His wife called and said, we got to do the book. The point is he did supernatural healings because that evolution that I said, where you get into self-realization, where you're in touch with God and God's in touch with you. And he knew whose he was, but because he, he spent his whole time in prayer. Everyone says, well, he had 26 Rolls Royces and all those mansions and humma humma. Yeah. All that's true. But what happened is that we did the stories where we interviewed the people that were like 98 years old now, because we're talking about a guy born in 1935. Right. And um, he would heal people with tuberculosis, alcoholism, drug abuse, hemorrhoids, everything. And it, it, it's because he said, I see the divinity in the person and the divine, you can't be sick. Because he'd ask the divine health to come out and heal him because he said, God only knows now. I don't know if you want me to go that deep or not. This is too much for your show. If I'm asking, no, this is amazing. Let's even go deeper. Um, so <laughs> you're willing. <laughs> okay. Well, here's something that I think is incredible. I learned this a year ago. That the trees actually have souls. I learned this True. in in Judaism. Uh, there's a holiday that celebrates the trees and Arbor Day. they have souls. It's called Tubishvat. Yeah. Wow. No, I 100% believe that. How can you, just like we have the essence of God in us, there is a living essence in every living thing. And and I think also in our earth, you know, people call it Mother Earth. Well, it is, it has, you know, our earth has almost like a mother-like soul of her own because it's, she's a gift from God. It's, this is a live living earth when we have uh, several friends who are some of the famous astronauts and they say, you know, when they've gone up into outer space and look back and see all the other planets and look back at earth. And you, they said, it's just the most awe inspiring, humbling. It's the most beautiful thing they've ever seen because you see this living planet when all around you, you know, there's a lot of dead planets and I don't think they're completely dead, but I'm just saying, our earth is so full of life. And then of course, every tree, every, everything, everything's full of life, every plant. Um, and the magnificent, elegant wonder that she produces, like that's no accident. This is like the most beautiful creation. I mean, everything from peppers to carrots to all these wonderful flavors. How, who set that up that delight our tongue, you know, so we're happy. The earth makes us happy. It's set up to make us happy. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's so amazing. It's such a gift. And to not think, to think that that's just some kind of random accident <laughs> is so, uh, it's really not looking at the science. I honestly yeah. talk about I, the I, science. I find it disrespectful to oh, not yeah. see the miracles of our existence and uh, this, this, life that we get um right. what a gift there are a lot right? of disrespectful people but back to the soul of trees talking it's mm. just today you know we own a company called mark victor anson library.com and we ghost write books for people um that can afford to pay it and and uh, one of the books that came is coming through is one on trees because originally i was asked to redo uh write um johnny johnny appleseed 
into Jeanette Appleseed, but this guy wants to do it and said, well, to Tom, our partner said, well, what do you, what does Mark want? Well, I want us to reforest the planet with 1 trillion trees. Now that could look like a hard thing, but today with <laughs> drones, you can fly in and put the seed you want. And then all of what my wife was just saying, let's make enough fruit and stuff for everybody. So nobody is ever hungry again, because this, we're, we're at a time when, Right. John 10, 10 said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly because he could see the entirety of universe. Right. And in the entirety of the universe, if you use your mind in a positive and correct way, we create the unlimited because he always took shortage of fish, turn it into surplus fed. I'm going to say 15,000. It says 5,000, but women and children weren't counted and he had 12 baskets left over. So the, the big brother only knew abundance. There's no and there's no lack in universe is what Crystal's saying and and run aboard a back to space. And when these guys, we're talking about the astronauts that I met when I was in graduate school with Bucky Fuller, because he was a senior advisor to NASA, right? The, one of the smartest guys, Einstein's best student, my teacher, but he said, when you look back, this thing is living. I get goosebumps, which to me is corroboration of truth. I don't know if your listeners and viewers are going to agree with that, but that's what I believe. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've talked about this on previous episodes multiple times. I, I refer to it as angel bumps. Yeah. It is absolutely confirmation. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You know, a couple of things I, I want to share about, uh, Crystal, what you were saying about the earth having a soul, a couple of confirmations of that, that I received, you know, for one recent one, a long time ago, one was in, in, uh, listening to the audiobook of the alchemist that was, uh, okay. just recently. We love that. And yeah, it's such a great book. The soul of the world. Right. So when you connect with the soul of the world, all this magic starts happening and for the protagonist. Right. And right. he gets visions, et cetera. So, you Sweet. know, that's not a made up thing. It's real. The soul of the world. And another way to refer to it is, you know, Mother, Mother Earth or Gaia. <laughs> and the other book that I uh, want to mention is A Wrinkle in Time. And oh, that oh, book yeah, that's a good one. talks about how each star has a soul and can become like a person essentially and to take you on this uh this this amazing journey for the protagonists and at the time i read it i thought well that's silly a huge star <laughs> like a sun can be become a person and that the, the sun has you know intelligence and and you know heart and 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 consciousness and all that but now i see it as as truth. Yeah. I understand what you're saying, Stefan, because I've read and understood a, a lot more on that. And even especially through like people's near death experiences, one that's really uh, interesting, interesting to us is Melon Benedict Thomas. He died for an hour and a half and he has one of the most documented experiences ever of a, of a near death experience, but he was pretty much atheist and he met God, the giant light. And, uh, you know, and then also he saw this experience of all these souls and he saw, he thought humanity was so tainted and bad. And he realized how beautiful souls are every, every soul, even, even when we've, you know, done wrong, there's so much beauty and nobility in every single human soul, you know? And, um, and then he talked about how he saw that we came from like, stars of light. We are the light, you know, God creates from the light. And so, you know, the more you start to understand, the more these, what you would have thought is like crazy co concepts, you know, makes so much sense, right? Yeah. We are the stuff of light and it, everything already exists in the universe and always has. And so when the intention of God comes together with you and, and your expression, anything can happen. So in hitchhiking on what you said also, Stefan, is it, um, first of all, the Egyptians, uh, which a lot of uh, Moses and stuff come out of Egyptian lore, including part of the Ten Commandments. But the point is, the Egyptians believed that God was the sun because the sun made everything that ever happened happen on our planet, inclusive, inclusive of our little planet, as far as their cosmology and cosmogony was concerned as off of that. But from a scientific point of view, Einstein's best explanation of E equals MC squared came from my teacher, Bucky Fuller, and that's why they befriended each other and he became his best student. But E is all the energy of physical universe, and it only comes in two forms, 
radiant sunlight, metaphorically or light light, and then uh, tied up as a knot, whether it's my body or this table or whatever. And, and so the sunlight does become this stuff. So we are the stuff of light and the major light of lights, I would say, I've never said this before, but I think I would let, love you guys to argue it if I'm wrong, but is, is God, he's the light of all lights, right? The light of all lights, the holy of all holies. And yeah. another thing too that, uh, yeah, I don't know, pops for me is I, I've heard of this guy that has this remembering of, past lives that go very far back it's not just a little snippet uh or just the most recent past life this is matthias de stefano and oh my god he's wonderful he's amazing okay yeah he talks about the seven yeah. to twelve levels of dimensionality yeah. correct and it, by the way so crystal is the master maestro of this but let me just do my preface the real aramaic that jesus said is my house has many dimensions. Now remember, to a second grade mind, whoever interpreted that says my house has many rooms. And if it weren't so, I would have told you, but insofar that it is, I got goosebumps again, insofar that it is so where I am, you may be, but Crystal is a, a scholar in his stuff. And and he is, as far as I'm concerned, he is dimensionalizing the truth of awareness, my dear. No, I just, I, I'm, it's so interesting that, that you brought him up because he's very, uh, you can tell that you couldn't make this stuff up, <laughs> like, like, right? So what? So I'd He's love young. to. I'd love to have you finish your thoughts on that. Like, I what? What do you think of him? So I just, uh, <clears throat> I know he's the real deal. I, I have a knowing about this. I don't have any information though to base it on. It's just a knowing. I have not watched his interviews. I just started watching. Uh, what is it, Marcus Aubrey? Uh, interviewing Matthias and uh, just, yeah, this guy is, is amazing. I just feel r really drawn to his stuff, but I have not started watching uh, other than this first few minutes. But I, I, you know, what happens for me is I get uh, in, in front of the podcast mic here and I never have prepared questions. Like I didn't have, a, a, I'm interviewing Mark Victor Hansen. I better prepare. No, I just need to be t tapped in, tuned in, ready to relay what comes to me. And I know that when stuff just pops into my mind, that's not my subconscious. That's not like, uh, you know, a little bit of indigestion or whatever. Like if you remember uh, the Scrooge movie, uh, that's, that's my, my guides, my higher self, my angels whispering into my consciousness. And so if it comes in out of nowhere, uh, it doesn't have any emotion attached to it. It just simply is. And it stays put. Like it's this whole thing about Matthias. I didn't remember his, his full name even. I just know like, okay, I'm supposed to bring up Matthias. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, sure. I'll... And, and instantly we knew, isn't that crazy? Because a lot of people haven't heard of him. But um, I, I just wanted to say when you, it makes sense when at least when you know when i look around my life when you look around your life that we that we come into the this world with some experience that this isn't the first time otherwise we'd all be kind of just pretty much alike right and i grew up in a family of nine kids same two parents ate out of the same refrigerator had the same rules and all of us were so different from the second we took our first breath we were really different in how we understood life how we process life and so you have to understand that we've had experience. We're eternal beings too, in some way, you know, on both ends, we're going to continue on and we've come from somewhere. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily like reincarnation on this earth or just other dimensions of learning and understanding. And there are just things that, you know, sometimes it, I, I get that feedback all the time that you're talking about stuff and from the universe, it's just boom. Yeah. Some of it saved my life. <laughs> I've been so, reading a book called, uh, from Betty Bender about past lives. And there was something that just really stood out for me. And it's like these uh, tribal leaders who were uh, warring with each other, the way that they make peace is by reincarnating as siblings and they work it out over <laughs> cornflakes at breakfast. <laughs> That's interesting. Isn't that, isn't that something? 
Wow. So, so I want to go back to two questions ago and then add to that because mm-hmm. you're asking, it, or at least I'm implicitly you're asking, and I'll explicitly be answering as best as I can. But what what he is, Matthias, is, is a definition of our evolution, which I respectfully understand. There's some people in what I would call the old church that get stuck in their stuff. They get stuck in religiosity. And, and, and I wrote a whole book called Dare to Win a long time ago, and the first chapter was Don't Get Stuck. And, and the point is, you, you're supposed to be up. You're supposed to be growing. And what Crystal's saying is, for the first time, we have enough understanding of the dimensionality of the potentiality that you and I can, are going to, our spirit lives forever. And when you do die, based on us watching all the stuff that happened at Dartmouth, 20,000 NEDs, near-death experiences, all the people had exactly the same experience. They died, got the other side, cancer, heart attack, car crash, whatever. They all were told by Big G, hey, the game for you is not over. You didn't do what you're supposed to do. Learn what you're supposed to learn. And and we wrote ass because we think this is the university of life. Right. And unless somebody goes through all these questions with the best friend, their mate, their spouse, their mastermind partner, business partner, church, temple, ashram, mosque partner, I don't care who they go through it with. Although it's got, preferably, it's a person with an open mind. The mind works like a parachute. It only works when it's open. And, and, and you're willing to explore some of who you can become, because that's what asking is about, from my point of view and Crystal's, is what is the dimensionality of your passion and purposefulness so you fulfill your destiny while you're in humanoid form? When you said a mind only uh, works like a parachute when it's open, uh, that reminded me of another uh, kind of truism that, or, or kind of a mode of operating in life that I subscribe to, and it's the willing suspension of disbelief. I love that. You know, that's stuff and that is as important as anything. Um, and I, you know, I wanted to say we all come into this world and we talk about this in the book, how we all come into this world as perfect little uncorrupted askers, right? We are infinitely curious. Curiosity is part of the asking journey, right? We want to know who, what, when, where, why, how, right? Because we're discovering and it's no um, wonder that children evolve so quickly through those years because of that curiosity, because of their willingness to ask. And then depending on how we were parented, what happened in our school years, you know, you stop asking so many questions, sit down, don't, don't ask questions till you're called on. You know, I'm tired of hearing you ask something. And, you know, maybe your opinion's not valued when you, you go to work and leave home. And suddenly you get shut down as a human being. You forget who you were. We forget who we were when we came to this world as this seeking, wondering, curious little being who was perfectly uncorrupted. And so that's part of what Mark and I are teaching in this book is like just getting people to open up to that natural state within of wonder and curiosity to start asking the questions again, you know, ask yourself, ask others, because we can't do this journey alone. You know, there's nothing, you will never accomplish anything in this world without somebody else involved. We need each other. We cannot be an island. Yeah. So the asking others is so important. The asking yourself part is that reflective journey. How can we know how to, where to, how to go forward if we don't understand where we are and don't understand what our vision is for, uh, of ourselves? And the only way we get a vision of going forward is to sit with ourselves and ask ourselves, where am I now? Where do I want to be in the nth degree of my most amazing imagination, right? Stop holding back. Stop p- painting the the minimalist picture, paint the picture of what you really want in your relationships, in your mind, and then ask the questions backward. Mm. How, how am I relating in this relationship to this wonderful human being? How, what, what, you know, what do we enjoy together? What adventures? How do we treat each other? How will you ever achieve those things if you can't paint the picture and then ask how you got there? Ask yourself what that looks like and ask God, you know? And then the other part of asking yourself is really taking it into action, right? What are the steps I need to take? Because the I just like you said, the universe is going to give you feedback. God's perfect universe is set up to answer every question. And that's what we want people to understand. It's the perfect universe that God set up for us. Your questions, all, all the answers are there. You just need to ask, just like Jesus said, you know, seek and you'll find. Knock on the door, it'll be open. Ask and you will receive. Yeah. And I think that some people actually take that as a, you know, ask for things from God. 
because they don't right. hear an answer. They don't hear God's voice. They don't have a burning bush in their backyard. Uh, <laughs> you don't need one. God actually does speak to you. You just have right. to be open to it. But asking God to many people means I'm going to pray and ask for things like uh, like I'm asking for for my wishes uh, to a genie. And that's not right. that's not how it works. I mean, you can ask for things. Right. But that shouldn't be the primary modus of your interactions. Your you, like a, a dialogue, a conversation, is one where you say something, ask something. You you then stay quiet, and then you wait for the response. And that is the part that's missing, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. Now I'm curious to hear. Was that a question? Uh, go ahead. Okay. I, I heard it as a statement. If you were saying that as a question, I got an answer, but yeah. I'll let you ask your question. No, so I guess my, my question would be, what are your thoughts about uh, people uh, talking to God as if they don't expect to hear anything back and they're only making requests? And usually those requests are for things for themselves or indirectly. It's It's not... Instead of asking for, let's say, ask for wealth or for uh, some investment to, to play out well, how about asking for more wisdom on which investments to make or more certainty so that you're not crippled by fear instead of asking to um, you know, have a disease healed, how about asking for your, your own healing abilities to be awakened so that you can heal yourself and others. I don't know. I just, I feel like the quality of, of a lot of questioning and asking uh, needs to be upgraded. And I'm, I'm included in that too. I'm all, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm a toddler at this, uh, like, like all of us, but you know, it's like, uh, it seems, it seems like there's a lot of, uh, a lot of potential there. I'm curious to hear what your uh, recommendations are for our listener. Well, your recommendation is spot on as far as I'm concerned, because Solomon, when he's talking to God, he could ask God for anything. And any one of us can ask God for anything. But he said, what do you want, Solomon? Because you, each of us has got to get definite with the infinite. When I went bankrupt, you know, lost $2 million in a day back in 1974, I asked, what do I want to do? And I want to be a professional speaker, you know, that talks to people who care about things that matter, that would make a life-changing difference. I'm not going to go there, but he asked, Solomon asked for wisdom and, and said, well, I'll give you all the riches of the world. And that's basically what you're saying. When you ask for wisdom, you'll figure out how to work with your immune system so that it does heal. Because what happens is when you go to wisdom, your mind has all these channels and most of us get locked into one channel. I'm sick. I have cancer. I have a heart attack. I had a stroke. I'm crippled. And what happens is if you can change the channel to the wisdom channel, I believe, and I think I'm talking for my wife, she's allowed to answer different, but that there's a solution to every problem. And, and that's what we're teaching entrepreneurship. And, and we say, look, an entrepreneur finds a problem, fixes it, scales it, makes a vast profit. And obviously I've sold more books than anyone. And my goal is to sell a billion, which I haven't done yet, but I've asked God, show me the way even today during some prayer time and meditation and contemplation. And, and uh, I think I've got it. And you say, well, why do you want to do that? Well, I'm going a little long here, but when you go to the richest guy at one time, Andrew Carnegie's house in New York at 95th and 5th, it says authors are the wealth of the nation. Now I'd change it today to the wealth of the world, but he, number two, which most people miss about them calling a robber baron, said no one can get rich without enriching all others. How would you answer going for the wisdom, honey? No, I just think when it comes to like, you know, it's not a, a grocery list, like, you know, a Santa Claus list. I want this. <laughs> can you give me this? Can you give me this? It is really about asking, you know, what to get guidance, to have that guidance, that sacred guidance and, and that internal compass that will, will guide you um, to help you see opportunities. Um, first of all, help you get to know yourself. What is it that you really want, right? And then how, why? And, and why is that meaningful? And so when you ask these questions, they're very deep probing questions, internal questions. And then, you know, um, in the last part of the book, we, we talk about asking for your greater, greatest purpose, right? Because 
And we say, we talk about this, our question switch technique, instead of asking like, what am I going to get out of this? You know, or what, what can I have out of this? What can I gain? You know, what if we all switch that to who do I become if I do this thing or, you know, or make this decision. And that's a, it's an important question switch. It really changes your perspective. Who do I become? And if we look at life that way, it's not all just about gaining material goods. And that's one of the problems we're seeing right now, you know, even in government and just the way things are run, people have really given into this power, greed, control model. So many human beings, and unfortunately, they're most a lot of them are in government positions. <laughs> and so it's all about how they can gain personally instead of being in service to the people who elected them to serve. And so, you know, that's where corruption comes from. And at the end of the day, where does it lead? I mean, greed and power become can become like an addiction. And it, there's no, just like having another drink when you're an alcoholic, there's no true satisfaction in that. You are just feeding a monster. And, you know, Mark and I pray and meditate all the time that our world, that the world model is changing because I think people are waking up. I think people are seeing some things that have been troubling and puzzling you know, over these past few years. And we're saying, what's a better model, you know? And, and it's creating this oneness where people are naturally coming to a point where we, we understand we have to consider each other and everything, consider each other and the earth and everything else. And it's not just about making corporations more profitable, you know? Yeah. Yep. Now there's a, a book about Solomon that uh, popped in my mind. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are. It's about the ring of Solomon, which is, so Solomon had this, this um, ring that allowed him to communicate with animals and to hear them in like his, uh, in his mind, be able to communicate telepathically with them. And I'm curious, uh, you know, to hear what your thoughts are on, on this is, um, I think Solomon is, is such a, uh, such an amazing soul. One of, uh, mm -hmm. someone I uh, really look up to and I'm, I'm curious what, uh, did you know about this, the ring of Solomon and, and what, well, what first, about this? first of all, it's called the ring of Solomon. Cause I'll buy the book. Cause I don't know that at all, but I, I would agree that he had the telepathic ability because here's a guy who had 12,000 horses and chariots. He's a Jewish guy running 22 Arab countries that don't really get along with him. And they gave him wives and all that. That's why he had 700 wives and all that. Right. He had 20,000 Phoenician ships run out of Tyre. I happen to be scholarly pretty much, but I'd not heard about the ring. And we're friends with the guy who uh, wrote the riches of Solomon Scott. What was Scott's last name? Um, anyhow, Scott so, Keys? Uh, no, uh, no. the guy who made the NAC pills. Anyhow, okay. and then and then we went. I went to the uh, the okay. great um, at the Bauer, Bowers Museum in, in uh, Tustin, California. Mm -hmm. They had the Solomon exhibit, and I took my rabbi friend and my minister, and we went and spent all the time there. You'll find this interesting, I hope. Um, and we're discussing how far. Queen of Sheba came. Now she came 3,500 miles. Remember, America is only 2,500 miles. So she came as long as the Great Wall of China. And we've been to China 80 times. So, because they, I want to teach capitalism there and get out of communism. But the point is, is that she traveled by camel and horse with an entourage of 4,000. When she shows up, right? She's asking him the question. And when she goes into his palace, he had glass floors and water. She lifted her skirt. She, she was so scared she was going to hit the water. And and she'd never seen glass before. And so the first question that Solomon asked her was, how do you look through sand? Thinking, you know, um, oh, she's smart. She'll And she was. She He's the one he really fell in love with. Uh, and he said, you look through glass. And it just, it, it just, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. I mean, so no question about it, whether he had a literal telepathic ring that communicated with the, the Ark of the Covenant, that's a whole nother issue, uh, which we need to do a whole show on, I think. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. The book, by the way, is called King Solomon's Ring. It's written by King a Solomon. Nobel Prize winner. Uh, wow. his, his name is Conrad Lorenz, L-O-R-E-N-Z. 
And he had incredible ability to communicate with animals and understand essentially what they were saying and what they were thinking. Right. And this is not make-believe. I mean, he, he's a Nobel Prize winner. So right. clearly this guy was legit. But um, right. I was recently uh, able to interview uh, Laura Stinchfield, a, a famous pet psychic, and she's absolutely the real deal as well. And so if you're uh, wondering what kind of wisdom your, your uh, dog or cat has for you in terms of your relationship or your, uh, your wealth and all like, you would be amazed what they have to say. And it's, uh, wow. it's profound anyway. So yeah, Laura Stinchfield, she's the real deal as well. But I, I, I'm yes, reading I've the book, seen... uh, King Solomon's ring now. <laughs> it's, uh, it's great. And, and awesome. by the way, one of our kids is, is a uh, horse whisperer. Oh. And she woke me up at two o'clock and said, dad, the horse is delivering our baby. And it was, you know, I said, Ugh. Uh, are you sure? I said you call the vet. I said no, you're taking me over. And I said, well, good. If it's breach, she said she was a kid. She was fourteen or thirteen at the time. I said if it's breach, I said dad, what's breach? I said this is backwards. And I said if it's breach, you're reaching in. Dad's not. And and we were there, and a horse delivered on time. It was it was really miraculous. The only mistake Dad made is that I had a uh, iPhone, but I didn't videotape because I would have cherish that with my daughter being you know a wannabe vet at the time yeah <laughs> amazing and so that does exist we can talk to some I people can it. talk to yeah. animals yeah yeah uh, one one trick i learned uh about this uh, they can pick up our um pick pick up what we're thinking telepathically and so when we're talking to them if we also visualize the the images that go with it so okay mommy and daddy you're going to be gone for three days so then you picture in your mind the sun rising and setting three times and then night wow. comes on the third uh, after like you make this little movie in your mind and then at night on the third night you're coming back in the door and you're reunited with the, the your dog and you're petting him or her and you're giving him treats and like you know so they don't feel all anxious that you may not be coming back. So you pair that with the words that you normally would say, okay, we're coming back in three right. days. Yeah. I love that. And I swear they, I've seen that so much with our dogs from the past. They do read your mind. They understand when you're sad. They understand when you're mad, <laughs> you know, it's uh, they are really amazing. We're grand dogs yeah. sitting as we talk and we've got a great lab that mm. not only hugs her, but kisses her in the morning. I mean, it's just, the most amazing, yeah. beautiful, beautiful animal. So beautiful. Yeah, that's awesome. There's one other thing I wanted to talk about. I know our time's about uh, to the end, but there's this concept of asking for things that are not for your benefit, right? So you're either in service mode or self-service mode. I highly recommend being in service mode. Um, and so when you're in like full-blown service mode, you want the best, the most ben benevolent out outcomes for everybody. And one of the most powerful ways to bring this about is to ask for God to be, uh, you know, using you as the delivery person for his miracles. And, and there's, uh, in the book of Isaiah, there's a point where he's in at the feet of God. It's almost like he's interrupting a, a board meeting between the angels and God and like who's delivering this miracle and who's delivering that one and and you know all these assignments are being given and then here's isaiah at the feet of god and this, this you know little guy is like raising his hand here i am lord please send me right I, yeah. are you familiar with that that part of uh of the book of isaiah yes yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah well the whole principle there is exactly what he says next which is before you call i will answer and that's what asking is all about and that's why you got to like we're saying, you got to ask positively, correctly, and you got to ask in all three dimensions. And, and asking God is is a sacred honor, a sacred yes. trust. Mm -hmm. And and most people have done it perfunctorily, like you're saying, "I want me a new car, I want a house." Well, it, great. What are you gonna? How's your? What's your participation? And it is is it's a, like when we found this magnificent house, and people come in and say, "Man, it's got the best feng shui ever." Well, that's because we were, if you'll forgive the line, we were prayed up. We knew this is exactly what we wanted. Like when we finally synchronized in time and space, we knew 
each other sort of instantly that the love at first sight, which we're in the first time in history that while there's 8 billion plus people alive, I believe everyone's got their twin soul or soulmate somewhere alive on the planet right now. And the danger in the old days when you could only call it ecological sweep out only 29 miles or 30 miles from your house, you couldn't know very many people. But today with jets and communication and we've met people that we are soulmates with on Zoom interviews, both in Vietnam and in Europe, it's it just it is beyond I never expected to be going into high levels of elevated consciousness awareness that it, with, on Zoom calls like this one has been with you. This has been a absolute delight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same with I, I feel uh, very connected to you both, and uh, so honored, privileged to, to uh, share this time and this space uh, with both of you. You know, in, in uh, Kabbalah, they teach there is um, no time, space, or motion that that uh, that's all an illusion and it feels like time has kind of collapsed and now it's already been an hour and we're, we're, we're needing to wrap up. Well, Kabbalah starts with all his mind. I mean, it's, and one of the guys we write with is a Kabbalicist who's a dear friend. So we're, we're in and most <laughs> people, I got to do against, I think we've done 427 other podcasts as our, our count right now in the last couple of years since COVID started. And it's amazing to me, the amount of people that are not doing their homework, reading our stuff, which is you didn't read it, but you're so comprehensively aware. It's great. But so we just have to lead the whole podcast. Whereas, you know, it's nice that you are collectively informed because everybody needs to be, because you've got to ask questions to ask yourself, ask others and ask God, like we're teaching. So you grow in awareness. We're supposed to evolve. We're supposed to be enchanted with life. We're supposed to make it magnificent, not turn on the negative news and get crushed in spirit and soul and mind and heart. Yeah. Yeah. CNN yeah, this crisis news oh. network. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's a perfect name. Um, but this has been delightful, Stefan. I agree with you. It feels like the time just collapsed. I mean, I, there's just no way a whole hour went by. Right. Um, but thank you for being so open and probing these. I think these topics and this, these conversations that more people need at the soul level. And I think we're all raising our consciousness right now. The whole planet is raising in consciousness. It's time. And that's one of the reasons we've had to go through, you know, these challenges is because it forces us to look at things, to question things and to reach into a deeper part of ourselves. And so we're just happy to be here with you and uh, hope everybody gets a copy of the book. Ask it's on Amazon and you know, uh, Barnes and Noble, whatever, wherever you want to get it. Club. And then, Oh yeah, we're doing, if you go to ask the book club.com, you, we will send you an invitation to our free um, masterclass. We're doing a free masterclass because we want people to take their journey further and really go deep with this whole concept of asking. So yeah, join us for that. Ask the book club.com. Awesome. Well, we'll include the links in the show notes and, uh, yeah, so thank, thank you again. Um, yeah, you're, you're doing God's work. It's amazing. And, uh, you know, you you're, you're, uh, you're doing great things for, for humanity. Thank you so much. And thank you thank listener. You. you can do great things for humanity too. You are the change you want to see in the world. We'll catch you in the next episode. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer signing off.